All right. Well, thank you, uh, everybody, for having me come up to Seattle to uh, present the Revit coordinate system. So I'm Sash Kazaminijad. I'm a uh, licensed architect, actually, out of the state of California. And, uh, but I live in Portland, Oregon. Uh, so on my end, I'm an uh, application specialist. And so one of the things that I do is train and support uh, Autodesk products. Most of my focus is on the Revit side of things. Uh, the reason why I wanted to do this presentation on the coordinate system today was we tend to get a lot of tech support calls and emails on my models do not align. And I think we've all probably run into that at some point in time. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a presentation on this. So I've done this presentation before uh, in the Bay Area to a few of the Revit user groups out there. And then I like to come up to Seattle uh, to our office to, uh, to visit you know, customers and also teach courses. And I said, I'm going to do this out here as well. So thanks again for having me. Uh, if you're not familiar with ID8, uh, we are a Autodesk uh, authorized reseller. So once again, we sell Autodesk software. We support it. We also develop uh, software solutions for Revit. So if you're not familiar with our software, uh, ID8 Explorer, uh, ID8, uh, Bimlink, and Sticky, uh, come see me afterwards, and I can certainly uh, talk about it as well. All right, so here's the uh, presentation description, if you've read it. The reality is, uh, I think we've all been here before. Go to link models, nothing aligns, and then we realize that this is actually a bigger problem than what we anticipated. I used to be a really heavy AutoCAD user, and I was always uh, very adamant about aligning things at zero, zero, zero. It was just such an easy reference point, right? And I'm not going to put any blame on any disciplines or anybody, but usually you find one or two disciplines bringing in your files and then moving them and aligning them. And then the next time you give them an update, what happens? They do the same thing. And, and of course, that can definitely lead to coordination errors. There's just no doubt about it. And so you start looking like, well, what is this zero, zero point in AutoCAD, and why is it so important? Well, that also translates over to Revit as well. And so I'm not going to try to PowerPoint you to death today with uh, lots of um, you know, pretty graphics. I have some pretty simple graphics. I do want to go into Revit and show you some things that will give you a little bit of food for thought. Um, and what I'm going to do, I decided that I'm going to do this. When this gets all recorded and published up on your guys' website or on your uh, YouTube channel, I'm going to create a blog post uh, for this that will reference this. And then I'll put some data sets up. We'll find a place to put them. So you can download some of these files if you want to play around with them. Um, if you want my honest opinion, the way I learned this system, and by the way, I'm not an expert at it, I still have to retrain myself every few months if I don't really play around with it. So. These are great little exercise files to kind of move things around and help you out. So feel free to, to download them when they become available. All right, so what we're going to do today <clears throat> is we'll talk about a few of the terminologies. There's probably a lot of terminologies out there, but I'll just talk about a few of the important ones. And then I'm going to talk about this whole idea of acquiring uh, coordinates and also pushing coordinates. All right, so I'll talk about some of the concepts. And this, of course, leads to what we call shared coordinates. And I'm going to tell you, you don't necessarily need to use shared coordinates. We always talk about shared coordinates, but you don't necessarily need to use them. It kind of goes back to that, hey, let's just align everything at 0, 0, 0. That's a really simple uh, reference point that everybody can reference. But if you're doing more complicated projects, and I'm going to show you some examples here, shared coordinates may be your best friend. All right? So we'll talk about that. I t also talk a lot by the way, and I drink a lot of coffee. So if I go a little over time, bear with me. You're free to leave if you need to. Uh, but if we do have some time and, and if I'm moving at a slow pace, I'll talk about some of the uh, 2016 R2 and 2017 enhancements that they have done, including another linking position. So if you're not on Revit 2016 R2, if you're on the first shipping release, you won't have this option here. And it actually helps out quite a bit because it solves some of our linking problems. And it's called project base point to project base point. I don't consider it a cure for linking issues, but it sure helps out quite a bit if you're just trying to get a resolution on it. We won't get to resetting shared coordinates, I have a feeling, but I got some good news. If you go to our YouTube channel, I made a video that shows you how to make a Revit file that you can use to reset shared coordinates. How many of you have acquired coordinates before in a Revit model? 
All right, so a lot of people have done that before. And then how many of you realize maybe I want to reacquire coordinates? So you link something back in and you try to acquire it, and what happens? It says it's already been shared, right? And you're like, uh-oh. Because that's usually the first word that comes to mind. Maybe other words come to mind uh, as well. You know what I'm saying, right? Because you're like, oh, no, OK. The good news is, if you follow the instructions that I put together, it's a video you can watch, about eight minutes long, gives you a little bit of background. You can easily reset shared coordinates for your entire project, and then you can reacquire coordinates. Really simple. So uh, definitely check that out when you get a chance. All right, so I'm going to go over a few terms. And then we'll get into a little bit of a demo so you can see some stuff. So when we're talking about some of the Revit terminology, one of the ones that comes up is this, a project internal point. Unfortunately, Revit doesn't make everything so visible and so nice to see. We've probably discovered that, right? When you start off with a regular out-of-the-box template, you don't see the project base point or the survey point. And you're like, oh, there's other points, including hidden ones? Like, OK. What's up with that? Well, one of these is the internal point. And you want to consider this a fixed internal point in Revit that cannot be moved. It's actually kind of a bummer. I was talking to Travis about this earlier because, man, if I can move that point around, that will solve everybody's problem. It really would, but you can't. It's a fixed internal origin. It's the center of Revit. Then we have shared coordinates. Uh, everybody or whoever is an AutoCAD user or other users of other software are probably familiar with the UCS, right, which stands for what? User Coordinate System. It's basically your coordinate system. I probably really simplified that term. But if you're getting into shared coordinates, you're actually creating a user coordinate system. If you don't establish shared coordinates, you're just basically using the internal coordinates from within your uh, Revit project. But if you are Establishing any sort of shared coordinates, you're creating a user coordinate system. All right. Now, what's great about this is that this shared coordinate system can then propagate to other linked models within your project. Or if you're doing master planning and you're uh, taking Revit files or Revit projects and you're copying them am amongst a master site plan, well, then what you want to do is you want to use shared coordinates because you can propagate those locations to each one of those copied spots. And I'm going to show you that today. When we talk about acquiring coordinates, what we're actually doing is we're pulling coordinate data from another project file. And for today's example, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using an AutoCAD background. Because a lot of us do receive survey files, right? We either get it from a surveyor or from a civil engineer that has the coordinate system established in there. Well, we're going to be able to pull that coordinate system data from that file and establish shared coordinates. As I mentioned before, you don't have to necessarily use a system. I like to tell people if you're doing a really simple project that doesn't really require much coordinate or coordination, don't bother. We were talking about that a little bit. You, you like the, uh, just the internal origin point. Okay? But if you're going to get a really complicated project like master, you know, a bunch of, uh, of the same buildings all over the site or a campus plan, you may want to consider using shared coordinates. So if you're acquiring coordinates, if you're acquiring coordinates from a, let's say, a CAD file or a survey file or something, how do I then get that data out to the other files so we're all on the same shared coordinate system? Well, you can push that coordinate system out to the other Revit files. That's called publish. All right? I will talk about one of the problems with publish coordinates here in just a moment. All right? OK, now the points that you can see, the project base point is one of them. All right? So this is a local coordinate point that can be used to define a common elevations and coordinates. By the way, I encourage you, don't do it on your current projects right now if you want to play around. Start a fresh file, draw a box, and start messing around. Actually, I already set that up for you. I'll get it to you guys uh, later on. Start playing around with these points. Unclip them, move them around, and look what happens to the spot coordinate data. That's a nice way to really understand how this works. And I'm giving this to you as a gift. All right. Now, one of the, I will talk more about how the coordinate data um, uh, works, but it, it always reports relative to the shared coordinate point. There's a relationship between the survey point and the project base point. We're going to see that in action today. And then the survey point usually represents a known, uh-oh, that should be marker, not maker, on the site, such as a tri uh, triangulation point or a station pin. All right, So that's what these usually represent. Now, what I've found with most of these AutoCAD files that I'm bringing in when I acquire the coordinates, 
that survey point ends up at the 00, zero point, the 000, zero zero point that is uh, from the AutoCAD file. And you'll see this in action today. Okay, let me, uh, let me start up here first with the origin point. Okay, so here's what's going on here. In this example here, I'm showing everything kind of pulled apart. So if you've ever started with a uh, blank Revit template and you went to the site plan, you'll see the project base point and the survey point stacked on top of each other. There's actually another point underneath of there and that's the internal or origin as well. All right, this is the default. Okay, this is a default location. What I've done in this kind of graphic here is I pulled everything apart from each other just so we can have an understanding as to what's going on. So the origin point. All right, this origin point, and by the way, I was trying to kind of represent it similar to like the, the world coordinate point in AutoCAD, but basically this origin point is that invisible point that I was telling you about. It's the, the center of the uh, Revit environment, all right? Now, when you're linking Revit files in, because everybody here has linked Revit files before, right? When you're linking Revit files in, one of your options is to link it origin to origin, okay? Well, what happens is when you bring it in origin to origin, it's actually aligning the origin point from the linked file to the origin point of the base file that you're bringing it into, all right? So you gotta keep that in mind. This is the part I think that starts getting confusing for people that are especially new to Revit or don't quite understand the coordinate system. And I'm gonna demonstrate this here for you later, all right? So the origin point is also known as like the origin to origin point and also the startup location. Are you, is anybody here familiar with the startup location? All right, I got a couple of hands. Well, you're gonna all be familiar with the startup location today, so I'm gonna show you what that is. It's kind of a weird terminology. You probably found out that some of the Revit terms that they use are inconsistent, all right? And actually, even in this uh, nature here, we'll see that there's some inconsistencies as well, okay? Um, yeah, okay, so we'll talk about the shared coordinate point. I don't know, maybe you can argue this isn't a point. I don't really know. I'm calling it a point, so I'm making that up uh, at this point. Uh, but this is also not visible as well, and I'll show you why I'm considering this a reference point as well, all right? It's similar to the user coordinate system in AutoCAD, right? We were just talking about a UCS versus a WUCS, so the WUCS is the world coordinate system, okay? The, I have to say the survey point is typically referenced at this point as well. So the survey point is this triangle. When you acquire coordinates from a CAD file, a lot of times these two points are in alignment with each other, whether you wanna argue this is a point or not. And I'm gonna show you this. This is also a point of reference when using shared coordinates and exporting CAD files based on the shared coordinate system basis. You ever went to export a CAD file and you see project internal and shared as the coordinate system basis? Very important to understand that. I learned that the hard way years ago working on a project and uh, we exported out some CAD files to send back to the surveyors so they can go stake out on site. Luckily, we had a grove of trees because the staking went out in the trees and we found out that we didn't have our coordinate system established. So we had to go back and learn about shared coordinates. And this was back in Revit 9.1 where they didn't show you anything. And you're just like, where am I in this whole system, you know, this whole vast system that we live in? That was a little bit trickier. When they introduced the, the icons here, this really helped out uh, significantly. All right, so I'll come back and talk about this in a bit. The survey point is a known point to a surveyor. So we did kind of talk about the survey points. And you could probably walk around Seattle and look uh, in the ground, you can see the, uh, the markers that are cast in the sidewalk, right? We have a lot of those in Portland as well. Uh, what I did, what I'm noting here is that I unclipped this point. Did you know there's paper clips in Revit? There are paper clips and pins and padlocks, right? Uh, I can't connect the box apparently here. So I'm gonna close this down. Okay, so this is unclipped and moved away from the shared coordinate point just for this illustration. Okay, the project base point is typically located at a building corner or grid intersection. How many of you follow this rule or generally follow this rule? Does anybody have a rule for that? All right, maybe you will after this. Who uh, here uses like BIM execution plans? All right, and of those that raise their hands, are you talking about the Revit coordinate system at all in your BIM execution plans? If you're not, you should. 
And my rule is do not draw anything in Revit until you get a corded system basis at least established. Now, I'm not saying you have to have a survey file in your possession. You actually don't really need to, right? Oh, on the points themselves? Yeah, there, there, are, there are points that you can get points of reference to understand where these coordinate locations are. Well, the unit of measurement is based on the units that you set in your, uh, in your project settings. Yep. So, one of the ways is if you set your units up in, let's say, your CAD file or your other files, when you bring that in automatically, Revit's pretty good about determining the units from that file versus yours and scaling the model up and down automatically. I always tell people, don't link things in and just assume they're at the right scale. Always take a measurement or reference, right? It's easy to assume now, but the, when you link things in by the auto feature, it's usually pretty good about bringing that stuff in at the right scale factor. So yes, there absolutely is. And that's all in the link dialog box. You can set that there, okay? Now, here's what I learned by talking to customers and even from my own experience. Many people confuse this point as the origin to origin point. And that is actually not true, okay? Now, when you start up a Revit project out of the box, this point, and this point, whether this is a point or not, and this point are all in alignment with each other. So technically speaking, that is origin to origin. If I start moving this point away, if I unclip it, that's the key right there, if I unclip it and move it away, if I link a model in origin to origin, it's not gonna align based on this point, it's gonna align based on that point. Proof that that is not origin to origin, that actual marker is not origin to origin. And you're sitting there scratching your heads, especially when you're new, it's like, what is going on here? And the answer is, yeah, that's a really good question. What is going on there? It's really confusing, okay? So I just wanna bring that up to you. If you're kinda of new to Revit and the, and the coordinate system, this is not the origin to origin point. And you can prove that by unclipping it and moving it away, okay? But what's really important to understand about this point and this point is if you're using spot coordinates, there's a lot of power behind that. And my Revit demonstration is gonna show that to you. And once again, I unclipped it and moved it away from the origin point just for this graphic here. Here's your export settings. Has everybody been here at some point in time at to export to DWG? If you haven't, the worst thing you could do is go to export and just hit okay and assume everything's gonna be okay, because it's not. Always check your unit and coordinates because this is really important to understand. That project internal <clears throat> really represents the origin and that the shared represents the shared coordinate point. If you don't pay attention to this, when you go to open up that CAD file and XREF it into something, it's not gonna line up. And what I always recommend if you're learning this whole system is make some exports of these CAD files and XREF them in and see where they land. Take that and then take your Revit model and export it out to DWG and then XREF it in and see where it lands. Okay, very important stuff to play around with. Yes, Revit does have paper clips. I'm gonna briefly explain to you what each one of these means and then we'll go to the demo. So the survey point, the triangle that's clipped, represents the origin of the shared coordinate system, all right? Now, if you actually grab that triangle and move it around, you'll see these coordinates, the north, south, east, west, and elevation, they always remain zero, zero, zero. So no matter what, if I drag it around my canvas, it's always gonna remain zero, zero, zero. In other words, what I'm really doing is I'm moving that survey point further away from my project. That's really what I'm doing. And by the way, you don't actually need to use you don't need to use like acquire coordinates to establish shared coordinates. You can give people the coordinate system information and they can input that and establish shared coordinates. It's always nice to have a CAD file because it does it for you, okay? But you can give somebody the north, south, east, west, the elevation and the true north project north rotation. You can give people that information, all right? 
one of the things you need to keep in mind is when I actually move that point around, my model isn't going to shift over. It's not going to move on your screen. How many of you have taken the round project base point and moved it around? It's fun, right? And you notice that your whole model moves with it, right? All right? And what you can't do is quickly move it and think that it's going to trick Revit. It's not going to. It's just going to shift your project. All you're doing is you're just changing that coordinate system basis away from the survey point. That's all you're doing. All you're, it's like picking up your project and moving it further away from the survey point. That's really what it's like. Okay? It is recommended that you don't just move this point around once you've established shared coordinates because you're going to make the rest of the team very unhappy. All right, so just be aware of it. Put a push pin in it. Yes? Ah, I'm going to talk about that right now, I guess. I have a little graphic here. A lot of people think that how do I put this? A lot of the problems that I find with the, that, that message that comes up is because there's other floaty things in that CAD file, right? You zoom extents, and you're like, where's my project? And you find a little blip in the corner, and somebody put a marker there. And you're like, how did that end up over there? Chances are, if you clean all that up so you can zoom extents on your site, even if your origin point or your 000 from the CAD file is 50 miles away, you won't get that message. What happens is Revit goes crazy after you go, it's 10 mile radius from the origin point. If, the, if it extends beyond that point, Revit has computational problems. And let me tell you something, if you ignore that, you may be very unhappy with the results. You'll end up with graphical problems. Okay, you'll end up with graphical problems. So chances are you may need to go back and clean up some of the extra stuff. Now if you're bringing in a site that's 30 miles long, gosh, I hope you're not because why would you in Revit? That's going to be a problem because it's going to be further away from the origin point. But chances are that message is because you have too much stuff beyond the, the, the core data and that Revit is having computational problems. And what we end up seeing are graphical issues. That's the number one problem we run into. I don't know if that helps, but we can chat more about it afterwards. Yes? Yep. So the file that I have, the 000 point in this file is actually further than 20 miles away and it comes in with no problem. So check to see if you have other stuff going on. You may have to ask your surveyor for a different point if possible. I've had to do that before because I've looked for garbage and I can't find it. So I've asked them to go back and clean it up and they have and then things come in nicely. But yeah, Revit past that, it used to be worse. Was it like two miles or something? That doesn't really help. Um, now it just gives you 18 more miles of garbage you could put around there. <laughs> Great, right? All right. Uh, survey point. Um, what happens here is if you put a spot coordinate on, on this point here, the shared spot coordinates do not change. And actually moving this point really doesn't do anything. We're going to see that our spot coordinate data really doesn't change on us. Actually it will, and I'll show you why it's really kind of irrelevant. Um, but you guys ever use spot coordinates before on your projects? I love them. They are so powerful. All right? And maybe after today's presentation, you'll really fall in love with spot coordinates. But what happens is if you actually use a spot coordinate, I'll show you the three different types that there are, none of the spot coordinates reference the actual survey point. Okay? They don't actually represent that triangle there. Okay? A clipped project base point is the really important one. All right. The project base point values themselves. So if I click on that point and get the north, south, east, west elevation and rotation angle, those will change relative to the clip survey point. The project base spot coordinate values do not change. And we're going to show you this here. This, I think everybody's experienced. This that was a question I had earlier. Have you ever moved that point around while it's clipped and see your whole model shift over? Because you're just relocating the project. Right? If you ever use relocate this project, it's the exact same thing as clicking on there and changing the values in that point. All right? I used to use relocate project all the time. And I, start, I guess I'm starting to wonder why I would do that. That may not have been a good idea. Um, oh, well, that was a long time ago. Uh, but if you go to the manage tab position relocate project, 
you'll see that when, whenever you go into here and make those changes, you're just changing the values from that project base point. And finally, if you unclip it, the project base point values change relative to the clipped survey point. All right? So if you unclip this and move this around, it references that. All right? Model elements won't shift. And I don't believe it's a crime to unclip and move the project base point. <clears throat> All right? Nothing wrong with that. I try to avoid it if I can, but when customers didn't use origin origin and they don't want to set up shared coordinates, if they all have different project base point locations, they're all going to get different spot coordinate dimensions. You may want to unclip at that point and move your project base point so everybody's on the same location, so that if you are going to use spot coordinates, things will actually align. Okay. So I don't think it's a crime. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a file that I put together. I mentioned before, you guys are free to download it when, <clears throat> when we publish it. But I want to show you, um, I want to show you a file that I kind of put together here. I'll just give you a little bit of background on it uh, right now. So what I've done here is I've drawn a couple just uh, drafted lines here and I pinned them and then of course I made sure I, um, I, uh, I can't select pinned elements. That way I don't accidentally move things around because I have a tendency to hold on to the mouse and drag things around. It's just kind of how things are. What I've done here is this is the representation point of the origin point and the survey point and the internal point. So this is basically the starting location of Revit when you start a new project. Okay? And then what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and I just drew a couple grid lines here and put the corner of my building here. Now normally I probably wouldn't actually do this if I was working on a project. I would put the corner of my building at the project base point location. But for this demonstration, I don't want to confuse people with, uh, with graphics. There are three spot coordinate location types in Revit. And I believe the way they're named can be a little confusing. So what I did is I put the prefix of the name in each one of those so you guys can kind of see what's going on. One is called shared. And if I go to the edit type properties here and have a look at it, what I wanted to show you is that the shared represents the actual survey point. But I don't agree with that. That's why I called it shared instead of survey. Because if I unclip the survey point and move it away, it doesn't follow that triangular survey point. It stays where the uh, shared point is. So that's why I don't agree with the naming convention on this. All right? But this one's based off of this coordinate system basis. The relative one, if I go to edit type and have a look at it, the relative one, I do believe, because it's based on relative. Okay, that's the coordinate system basis. And the relative really represents the internal origin point, that point that you can't move around. Okay, that's the Revit internal origin point. And then finally, the project base point, right here, this one represents the project base point. Okay, so we're talking about the circular point. So let's do some damage. All right, so this one, these three points are based on the building corner. I'm picking the bottom corner of the building as my reference. These three represent the actual survey point, and then these three actually represent the project base point. We good so far? All right, so let's take a quick look here. I, did, I went ahead and I put a 10 uh, by 10 dimensions here. So if I look at the building corner, it's 10 feet in both the north and east direction, and it's referencing from this point. Relative, it's also 10 by 10, because that's the internal origin point. And then by a project base point, or the circular point in this case, it's also 10 by 10. So this is pretty straightforward. If you look over here, the project base point, the relative and the shared are all at 0, 0 right now. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward, because we're starting off at Revit's internal origin. And if I look over here, based on the survey point, I'm also at 0, 0, 0. Well, let's have some fun, shall we? And I'm not going to use relocate this project for this feature. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the project base point right over here. And I'm going to change this by 10 feet in the north-south direction. So I'm going to come over here and change it to 10 feet, like so. 
And let's take a quick look and see what's happened now. I left it clipped, which means I'm not disassociating it from Revit's internal origin. That's a key thing. If you can avoid doing that, I'd say that's pretty darn good, okay? If you can keep it there and not unclip it and have them move it around, if everybody can get their coordination done early on in a project instead of, oh, you know what, we're at like 80% CDs and we need to give this to our contractor and nothing lines up. Has anybody ever experienced that? Every, no, right? Everything's worked perfectly for you, absolutely. So get it at like 0% schematic design or maybe even before that. That's a good time to get this established if you can. So let me just show you what's, what's going on here. Relative to the shared coordinate point, I'm now at 20 feet. So I'm 20 feet, and by the way, I'm referencing over here, I'm 20 feet from here to here. That's what's going on. That's what this spot coordinate represents, okay? So if you wanted to locate your building, ready this, on like a master site plan, and you wanted to locate your building from the survey point that may be way over here, that's not a bad coordinate system basis to reference from because you're, you're referencing it from the survey point, all right? Or I guess in this case, the shared coordinate point. That's why I don't like to unclip and move that around. In terms of relative, I moved the internal origin point, maybe, I don't know if I really actually moved it, but basically I took the project base point and the internal point and took them together. And that's why it's still 10 feet. And same with the project base point, I haven't unclipped it and moved it away from Revit's internal origin, which is why it still shows 10 feet. And of course, I haven't moved the project base point around. I mean, I have, but I haven't you know, tagged it off of that point, so it's still gonna stay, say, zero, zero, zero from the project base point. Okay, does that make sense? Now, if I look over here, the relative point and the project base point dimensions are negative 10 feet. Does that make sense? Because that's 10 feet from the internal origin and project base point, okay? Now let me just show you something here. If I grab this point, you see it says zero, 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 it's grayed out. If I grab this point and move it, which I told you not to do, okay? When I move this point, all I'm doing in reality is I'm just moving the building further away from the origin, or from the, uh, from the survey point. That's all I'm really doing. It still remains zero, zero, zero. It's kind of like me picking up my building and moving it 10 feet further to the north, all right, because I moved this point to the south. Take a look, it still says zero, zero, zero at the bottom, or I'm sorry, the relative doesn't, because I moved it 10 feet further from this point to this point and I haven't unclipped this point so they move together, all right? And when I look up here, you see the shared point's now 30 feet. The, this direction or the Y direction is 30 feet from here to here. Does that make sense? All right, now let's add a little bit of confusion. And, I, and right here, by the way, take a look at this shared point. It's now 20 feet, okay? It's 20 feet from here to here. So this one does change. Okay, but based on relative, these are still at, on top of each other. The internal origin and the project base point are still on top of each other. All right, now let's make this messy. I'm gonna unclip this, okay? This is a solution, I suppose, for those that may not have coordinated things but need to get their spot, core, uh, their spot dimensions uh, lined up with each other. I'm gonna move this 10 feet, okay? So basically, it's now gonna be 10 feet and look what happens here. When I unclip this point, it says 20 feet from here to here. I'm still 20 feet from the project base point, but look at the relative point. You see what happened over here? I unclipped that point and moved it away from Revit's internal origin, that imaginary point that we don't see. And that's what that is referencing, that imaginary origin point. That zero, zero, zero that I like to call it, we were kind of talking about that earlier, that zero, 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 all right? So that's what's going on over here. It is 10 feet from here to here because I unclipped it. And if you look over relative here, it's minus 10 feet from here to here because relative represents 
Revit's internal origin point. Does that make sense? This is why I encourage you to download this file and take a look at it because I think you can play around with this and learn a lot from it. Unclip, move things around, etc. All right, and when I look over here, negative 20 feet relative, that's 20 feet from here to here. Okay, so that's what's going on in this case. And minus 10 feet from here to here. So it's very critical that in your BIM execution plans, you describe the nature of these points and the nature of how you're gonna do your spot coordinates. Okay, I used to use spot coordinates all the time when I was you know, working in the profession because I can get everything pretty dead on. No issue. Revit's actually really amazing when it comes to coordinating its real world location. It's so easy to do. It's so easy to do. All right. Now let's do something else that I don't really care for, but you can unclip this. And when you unclip it, you may notice that these become active. Okay. Let me just go ahead and make this minus five feet. Now, if you look at relative, I'm minus 25 feet from this point to this point, okay? And I'm minus 15 feet from here to here. You guys see that? And then here's why I think there's another hidden point in Revit, and that's right here, the shared point. You guys see it says minus five feet? <clears throat> I, don't, I haven't seen any writings that say there's a, a fourth invisible, or there's a, another invisible point, but at least in my mind, I believe there is an invisible point in here, and that's because I see that minus five feet. I unclipped it from the shared coordinate location and moved it down minus five. That's why I think there's another invisible point in there. At least in my mind, that's what I believe. Okay, does this make sense? All right. No, not that I'm aware of. It really is the 20 miles from Revit's internal origin point. So that's where you have to be careful. Right. It should be okay, yeah. <clears throat> so what I do, and I'm actually, I don't wanna get too far ahead because I'll show you what I do to deal with that. I bring the survey file to the internal origin, all right? And then that way I'm not making my project 20 plus miles away from the origin point, I bring the file to the internal origin. So you'll see this here in a moment, because I'm gonna do this as a demo next. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was doing there, yep, exactly. Yeah, what happens though, if I move a clipped project base point around, it takes those together with it, at least I think it does. One may argue it always stays there and you're just moving the survey point. I don't really know. I haven't looked at the internal code, I guess, for it to see how that works. But, uh, but that's basically what you're doing. What I did here is I just put those in place, and when I unclipped it, I'm leaving the internal origin point where it is. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely, so I like to have the survey point be where the survey point's gonna be, and then I really prefer, if people can, keep the project base point in alignment with the internal origin point. Because if you wanna use a origin to origin linking, then it works out really nicely. But as soon as you unclip and move that point around, the, the project base point, that's when people go to link models like, wait a minute, I thought origin to origin was the project base point, but it's not, so yes, I'm a big fan of that if you can do that. Now, if you never coordinated that at the, the beginning, I have to say that origin to origin goes away, okay? Has anybody ever tried figuring out how to move the origin point to a corner of a building? You can't, you can't. That's one of my feature requests. I don't know how that's gonna work. Have you ever tried moving an entire building? Oh, I mean, who's had a lot of luck with moving an entire building? literally selecting everything, it's tug of war, right? Because you have constraints on certain elements that don't allow you to go in one direction. 
I don't know how to tell people to move their entire project because they're really insistent on using origin to origin. I tell them you can't do that. I mean, good luck, you may be able to. I've tried it before, it's, a, it's just messy. So that's where shared coordinates can come into play. Okay, because shared coordinates is you say, you know what, I didn't use origin to origin as my linking, that's busted, I can't do anything. Let's establish a user coordinate system that we can all share and use that to align our models. That totally works. And that's what I'm gonna talk about right now. Okay, so let's uh, briefly talk about acquire and publishing coordinates. All right, so made this little graphic here regarding acquire coordinates. So this is where we're gonna get coordinate system data from a CAD file, all right? If you're maybe on the MEP or structural side, you may get this coordinate data from the architect, all right? Of course, you guys are gonna have to establish protocol as to where this coordinate system information is coming from. Typically, at least how I've always worked on projects, I'll get that from a survey drawing or from a civil engineer. I will link their CAD file in center to center. I don't bring it in origin to origin. I bring it in center to center, and then I actually take the CAD file and I position it near the origin point in Revit, okay? So I may say, uh, somewhere on the site, I'm gonna put my origin point, okay? That really represents the origin point for that site. Not a bad idea to pin the link afterwards, you know, in case you do what I do, which is press and drag. You know, the banana peel, as I like to say, right? That's really what it's like. And then, once I position it, I acquire coordinates. That will get the coordinate system data from the CAD file and make it the same in your Revit file. You have just now set up shared coordinates, okay? And then, I may hand that file off. If, you know, if you're working internally, maybe this is a master site plan or a grid file, okay? I may hand that off to the architect, or if I'm working internally, I'll just do the same thing. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna link this site file into my architectural file, and I'm gonna bring the site to the building. Good luck bringing the building to the site, right? You can't move the building. Good luck, if you make it work, let me know. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna acquire the coordinates. And then I may hand this model off to other disciplines. Notice I'm handing the model off with some instructions, by the way. Don't just hand it off, say, please acquire coordinates. You're gonna have to give them a little bit of information on like, please link it, align it here, 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 get the coordinates. And then once everybody acquires coordinates, you can either come up here and acquire coordinates or you can actually acquire it from the, um, uh, from the uh, linked positions tab. You basically select the link and go to the properties box. Once you do that, the good news is everybody is on the same user coordinate system. That's the key thing to UCS, all right? Now, I put a note here that acquiring coordinates works really well internally within your office and with other folks. It also works really well on master plans, okay? So, I also say, you know, careful coordination needs to happen that everything's in alignment before you acquire coordinates because what happens if you make a mistake when you acquire coordinates? Anybody know? Everything's off, you have to reset the coordinate systems, and is there a reset coordinate system button? There isn't, you have to use the method that I show you on our YouTube site, right? Make a Revit file that you can use to reset coordinate systems so you can go back to that process. Once you acquire coordinates, you just can't reacquire. It says, whoa, I've already acquired coordinates, what are you trying to do here? It's almost like a protection. They just don't give you good instructions on reset. Okay, so that's acquire coordinates, wonderful way to work with your consultants. There's also publish coordinates. So if I bring in the civil file into my master site plan, let's say I'm working within my own office, so under my own LAN or WAN, whatever terms you wanna use. I can use the same method, link center to center, position it, do all of that. The difference is I can then take this and I can push the coordinate system data out to each one of those files. I'm gonna show you both methods today right after this slide. This is actually really cool, but how do I push the coordinate system data out to my consultants that are not connected to my network? I guess we could talk about collaboration for Revit, right, we could po possibly talk about that. So this works really, really well if you're within your own network. So if you're doing your own master planning and all this work and you've designed multiple buildings and you wanna share the coordinate system, 
that's great. But essentially, if you're trying to publish the coordinate system out to a consultant model and then give them that model, eh, you're modifying somebody's instruments of service, right? We don't like doing that. So you may want to get that stuff in writing. Say, hey, I'll set up the model for you and hand it back to you. I prefer not to take on that responsibility. I prefer to hand it to consultants and let them take that responsibility. But internally, this is great. You can do this method and then hand them this site and they can acquire coordinates from it because it'll all be in the same coordinate system. Does that make sense? Let's see it in action, shall we? Because this is really what we want to see. Oh, when should you use shared coordinates, though? If you're going to have multiple buildings on a site, right, we want a point of reference, our own coordinate system for that site in addition to the survey point. Wonderful way of doing this. All right? When you, have, when you plan on having multiple instances of the same buildings or buildings on one site, if I'm doing a 100 unit, uh, you know, planned unit development, I'm going to have 50 of building A, 50 of building C, and whatever of building C. You don't need, you basically link in one of each and copy them around. You don't link it in 50 times for each one. Link in one and then copy them. And then you're going to position each one of those buildings on the site and you're going to push the coordinates for each one of those buildings back to the main file. It is way cool. You're going to see this today. If you've never done this, start doing it today. When you plan on exporting out to IFC, because it uses shared coordinates, this is the number one problem. When agreed upon, coordinate point was not established to begin with. We didn't have a BIM execution plan. All right, how do I fix this so we can align things? Shared coordinates is gonna be your best friend. So, we were talking about this earlier, right? A little bit. So if I don't need to use shared coordinates, how should I link my files? Kind of like how we did in AutoCAD, zero, zero, zero. If you're gonna be working on a small project and you just need to link things up and you don't wanna go through this coordinate system stuff, just do origin to origin, as long as everything was set up properly to start with. But if it wasn't, you're gonna to have to go to shared coordinates or do what everybody used to do, which is bring it in and move it around. Okay, here's your 20 mile question. Okay, you will get erroneous data. So I've, uh, through tech support, <clears throat> I'll get questions like, uh, everything's transparent. Or I had one case where somebody had done arches, but in a perspective view, they were pointed. As Soon as I wiped out the CAD file, problem solved. It was that CAD file. And you go back to the CAD file and you find out that there's like stuff over here and there's like a little blip over here, a little point. And you're like, how did that end up in there? And even if you delete that and reload it back in, problem solved. So make sure your CAD files are cleaned, purged, audited, vet them before you bring them in. Just don't bring them in. This is so important. If you get weird graphical behavior in your Revit models, look at your AutoCAD files. Look at those links. Go back through and clean them up. This is, I cannot emphasize this enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So far it looks like we're good on time. This is the fun one. I mean, it's all fun, right? I'm going to close this file out. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with a, just a master site plan. Okay. I don't even know why I did this. I should have started with a new template because I didn't do anything special to this file. When I start off here, by the way, the site plan, the default site plan shows you the two points. They're turned off categorically. It kind of bums me out. I prefer to actually have them on so I can see where I'm at on my project. But categorically speaking, they're turned off by default on level one and level two. Your internal origin point, your survey point, your project base point, and maybe we can argue the shared coordinate point are all on, in alignment with each other. We're basically at the center of the Revit universe, okay? What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get a hold of my civil engineer and my surveyor and be like, hey, I need that, uh, that Revit or that AutoCAD file. I'm gonna go to insert. I'm gonna pretend the import CAD button does not exist. I'm going to go to link CAD. Don't use import CAD. I'm going to go to CAD links, and I'm going to bring in the survey file. Okay. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, this feature right here, great if you ask me except for survey files. I don't want to take a property line that's down to the exact degree, minute, and second and straighten it out a little bit. 
So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. You will still get line. Yeah. I don't, and I don't want to call them errors because they're warnings, right? Line is slightly off axis. That's the kind of stuff you may get. It's not an error, right? It's a warning just saying, why would you want to draw something just slightly off? And the answer is really like, yeah, good point. People tend to forget that with, with Revit because in AutoCAD, you can draw anything however you feel like, right? We can get down to the 10 thousandths of an inch. But in Revit, why would we do that in an architectural or an, on a, an MEP instruction? We're not going to get down to that fine level of detail. And I do presentations on warnings. I do talk about warnings and how they pile up. I call that a low-level warning. Um, it's more of an, ir it's an irritating warning. I like to deal with the bigger warnings like calculation problems or redundancy. So in this case, I tend to kind of ignore. Oh. If you get to zero errors, you're awesome. Like, you're way beyond awesome. I've never, on a large project, ever gotten down to zero. That's like, you're a Revit master. Yeah, and there's no, you know, there's no clear warnings. You know, there just isn't because Revit's always constantly keeping track of that. Um, but if you get down to zero errors, come see me. I'd like to know your, your secret. All right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring it in center to center. I want to just bring it in by the center. Of the, you'll see why in a moment. But I want to bring it in to find the center of the CAD file and bring it into the center of Revit. Yeah. You'll see why. You'll see why. I'm going to hit open. All right, so there we are, center to center. And I brought it in at level one, meaning if I come to the 3D view and I go to uh, reveal hidden elements, it's down at the zero plane, right? So this, this file here has all the flat, you know, kind of road work done at the zero elevation and the topography is up at, at whatever elevation it's at. <clears throat> now, if you have a project base point location, maybe that's going to represent where, um, where the, the master project base point is going to be for this site. I actually have one established over here. And if you ask me, it really doesn't matter. It's just basically a common point on the site that you can reference to. I have one here. And you're going to see the magic of how powerful this is. I mean, take a look at this first off. If I come over here and I click on this point right here, it's at zero, 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 okay? Take note, this is another very powerful thing to know. My orientation's at Project North. My survey file came in at True North. Keep that in mind. Oh, this is gonna be so good. <clears throat> I'm gonna click on this point right here. I'm gonna go to Move. And I'm gonna move this site to the internal origin. Don't itch yet. You'll see. I'm moving it there. Don't freak out. All right. Now, I positioned it in the X and Y. Now, I'm just going to, for, for sake of you know, demonstration, I'm going to rotate. Hopefully, you're not getting too itchy yet. I'm going to rotate this CAD file into Project North. I'm basically bringing in the CAD file to where I want it to be, and I want to orient it according to how it's set up in this view, which is in Project North. Don't freak out yet. Now, I want this origin point to be up at the 611.57 feet. Now, if I go back to the 3D view, it's still down at zero. That's what's going on. I need to get that point up to the 611.57. What should I do? What's that? I may have heard it. Yes, move it down. I'm just going to click on this CAD file. I'm going to come over to the base offset right here. And I'm going to say minus 611.57. I don't need to convert my units of this over yet. But I am going to convert it just so you can see the proof here. And I'm going to hit, I don't know going to hit anything. I was too slow. <clears throat> now what happened was the survey point and the origin point and the project base point are at 611.57. But we're not done yet. There it is. You guys ready for the fun part? I'm going to go to Manage, Coordinates, 
and I'm going to acquire coordinates. Before I do that, I'm going to zoom in really close just so you can see this. Can, you, uh, can everybody see these two points? All right, keep your eye on that. I'm going to go to coordinates, acquire coordinates, and I'm going to pick the CAD file and watch this. You guys see that? I'm going to hit escape. Check this out. Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to project units, and I'm going to change this to decimal feet to a couple of decimal places just so we can look at units to units here. You guys see that right there? I can guarantee you, I'm not going to put my house up as a, as a bargaining chip, but I can guarantee you that is going to match exactly to the data that's listed here. What do you think? Pretty sweet. And, oh no, we're not done yet. Check this out. Remember I rotated this? So the CAD file was in a Project North orient, although this is actually a really bad example of Project North. I was just doing it for demonstration purposes, but check this out. Do you guys see that? Revit is smart. Can you believe it? It is really smart. It knows. In most cases, it's smart. It knows that rotational difference and takes that into consideration. I did not just bring it in origin, origin, because that cat file would have been way far away from the origin point. I was going to ask you that. So in that sort of file, where is the world coordinates? So that's way off. That's way. It's that 211,000 feet that we saw. That's where it is. Okay, that was the, the coordinate point that was established by the engineer. I basically just brought this to the center of Revit, and it moved. Correct. Correct. And you see how far away that survey point is? Do you guys see that? That matches the AutoCAD file. Yes. So what I ended up doing is I got this from uh, one of my civil techs, and I said, hey, let's establish together a project base point. All, all he did is he went in there and just we picked a corner, and he just gave me the coordinate data so I can see the numbers. I could have went in myself and measured the distance from there, because it's really north, south, east, west, and elevation. He just did that for me. But other than that, that 000 point was already established in that CAD file that far away. So there wasn't any manipulation. I just said, hey, find me a nice corner, give me the numbers, because I was too lazy to do it myself, and hand it over to me, and I'm just going to use that as my demo. But that's exactly what I did. If I didn't have that, I could have still picked any marker on site and aligned that project base point to that and done the same thing, and I would have been guaranteed that data. Yes, sir? Yep. You're not seeing the survey point. Absolutely. Now, so a couple of things. You could, even though I don't really like this, you got to establish which coordinate systems that you want to do, like your spot dimensions and everything from. You got to be very careful. You could actually unclip that survey point and move it to a spot on the site if there's another survey point on there. And then when you zoom extents, you won't have this issue. Just keep in mind that your spot coordinates because of the way they're designed, aren't going to reference that triangle. It's going to reference that 0, 0, 0. That's, that's, so that's the part I don't like. Okay? Or you can ask your civil if there's another point on the site that they could use so that these two are very close to each other. The problem with some of the demo videos that you see out there on shared coordinates is like the survey point is so close to the site, but that coordinate point basis is not usually, you know, you're talking about state plane and how far away it is. That's usually not the case. I like at least for this to be real world. So if you need, if you have another survey point on there, and, and this is the zero, 00 point that you're going to live with, you could unclip and move that if you want to. Uh, but keep in mind, you've got to be careful about your spot coordinate references, because it's not going to represent the triangle. It's going to represent the original 000, zero, zero location. So just something you want to keep in mind. Does that make sense? So you have to be very careful. Now, to deal with the zoom extents, what you could do 
if you don't really need to see this point, I could, in theory, right click on here and say, you know, hide and view category. And then, you know, do my zoom extent. And then put my crop boundary, right? There's my crop boundary. Now, if I turn that point back on, of course, it's going to zoom extent all the way out. But now I'm around my site. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Yes. Be well, if you use the internal point, it's going to export out right here. Okay. If you use the survey point, it's going to go back. Uh, it's going to go back to the actual survey point location. The shared court or the shared site is going to go back to the, that that point back there, and that's the key thing. But if everybody was all nicely aligned at origin to origin, then that may not be a bad export basis. But it's not going to be in alignment with a civil file because a civil is referencing from a different point. If that makes sense. So yeah, you got to be super careful with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this this CAD file is really large numbers. I'm very far away from the origin because I, I want I made it so it was more than 20 miles to prove that that I wasn't going to get that 20 mile error. I think you were talking about that earlier. Um, so yeah, it absolutely can be large. The key thing is no dirt and dust around between that 20 mile distance. Bring it in. I like to bring it in center to center, position the CAD file to my building. I bring the CAD file to my building and then I acquire coordinates. Yes. Yeah, so my origin point and so my internal origin and my survey uh, and my uh, project base point are right here. And my survey point and my shared point, I guess we'll call it, that I, I'm going to call it the fourth imaginary point, that's all the way back at zero, zero, zero. That's where those points are. But as soon as you unclip this point and move it away, you can't align things that say origin to origin. But I always ask people, I'm like, hey, Coordinate your origin to origin and your survey paint. Get everybody on the same page. That's, you're golden. You're golden. There should be no reason why this gets uh, messed up. <laughs> All right, now I want to show you guys something. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to uh, just uh, Project North. By the way, this is not a good example of Project North, right? All right, now check this out. Uh, I'm going to go to Insert, and I'm going to link Revit. And I'm going to go to a couple buildings. This is going to be really fun. And I'm going to bring this in origin to origin. And the only reason why I'm bringing this origin to origin is because I know the origin point is right here. And I can grab my building really quickly. OK? That's all I just, I'm going to leave it at that. Because watch where it's going to show up. Right there. OK? Because the origin point 611 feet. I was good. I put the origin point from that building at the corner. Right? Remember, that's not a bad place. So I just did it origin to origin so I can bring it in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this building and I'm going to move it on the site. And same thing, I'm going to rotate it on the site. You guys see that? I'm going to copy it over. Notice I'm not linking it in again. All right, I'm going to rotate this one like so. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to copy it one more time. Okay. Now keep in mind, um, I would want to cut a building section through the buildings and get them properly cited in terms of the Z elevation. You guys know about that, right? I just brought it in at 611.57 feet. I may want to look at this. This is actually a relatively flat site. Uh, I would cut a building section and move them up and down. All right, all I'm doing is I'm just putting a bunch of the same buildings on the site. All right, now check this out. I'm going to come in one more time. I'm going to link building B, origin to origin. The only reason why I'm doing it here is because I can easily find it. Okay, I'm going to grab this here and I'll put it over uh, here. And I'll rotate this, and I'm going to copy this one, and let's make it really drastic. I mean, I don't know how drastic that really is, but OK. Now, if, if I had the master site, but I was consulting with an architect, 
and they need to get the coordinate system data from this file, I would hand them this master site file that I created and say, you need to position your buildings and acquire coordinates, okay? But check this out. If I come in over here, you're gonna love this. First off, always be sure to give your building a name. A lot of people forget this. I'm gonna call this uh, A1, meaning building A number one, okay? Always give it a name. Why is that important? Anybody, can anybody answer that? Yes, more importantly, under the insert manage links, when you go to your Revit links, uh, I'm sorry, when you go to visibility graphics, that is, I lied to you there, when you look at building A, you wanna know which is which. See A1 is over there? Because you can manage all the building A's globally or on an individual basis. But when it's called one, two, three, you're like, what's that? So I always like to tell people, take a moment, Okay, I'll call this A2, and then I'll do A3. I promise you I'll make this fast. And then I'm gonna call this B1, and I'm gonna call this one B2. Okay, now watch this. I'm gonna take the coordinate system data from this master site plan. I'm gonna hit the save button. I'm gonna take this data and push it to these buildings. I'm gonna come over here, by selecting the building and then selecting the shared site, and I'm gonna publish the current coordinate system to that file. And I'm gonna change the naming of it so we know which is which. So if you have deed data, if you know where the project's gonna be located and you don't know the name of the building or anything like that, give it the property information. Is it an address? Give it something that you can easily identify. I'm gonna change it, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the internal coordinate system from here and I'm gonna duplicate this one, I'm gonna call this building A1, okay? Building A1, and I'm gonna copy this to clipboard, okay? I'm gonna make that building A1, I'm gonna hit okay. I'll hit the reconcile button. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna record this. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, yeah, record this, but change the name, because I don't wanna overwrite building A1 with this new A1, with this A2, I wanna give it an A2 position. If you do that, you're gonna make this the A1 position. I'll come over to change. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'll call it A2, hit okay, hit okay, and then I'll do A3. Okay. A1, A2, A3, those have all been recorded. Notice here when I click this one, it says, a2, and when I click on this one, it says A1. All right, and then finally, let me just do this one real quickly. Notice when I go to publish and I go to change, notice there's nothing in there that says A1, A2. That's because this is a different Revit file. Otherwise, you'll get both Revit file names. That'd be so weird. So this is a separate one. I'm gonna go to duplicate here. I'll call this building B1. I'll copy this one, hit okay. And then I'll go over here and make this one B2, okay? Oh, this is so exciting. Now watch what happens when I hit the save. Oh, actually, you know what's really neat? Check this out. Take a look at the, the timestamps, 10.14, 10.15 a.m. I'm gonna hit the save button. I'm gonna save the positions of these buildings on their site back to the link for building A and for building B. Isn't that cool? Like how does it get in there and do that? It's all magic. It's all Revit magic. It's all it is. All right, now let me show you something here. By the way, I could put topography on here, I'm not, just for the uh, sake of time. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go open building A. Don't open the backup file, by the way, because that data isn't published yet. I'm gonna open up building A. What do you notice? Yes, you do. See the triangle in the circle? 
Yeah, when I pushed the coordinate data out, it already established and shared the coordinate system. Done. Now take a look at this. I'm going to come in over here. This is the annoying part. I could turn off the survey point, but I don't feel like it. Hey, look where I put that. Uh, see, coordinate that, right? This is the local base point for this building. All right, now check this out. I'm going to go to Revit link. Oh, by the way, this is what's weird about CAD files. I haven't really dug deep into this. I'm going to go show hidden elements. Now when I go to link Revit, I'm going to bring in that master site plan. And how should I bring it in? You got it. Shared coordinates, because they're on the same coordinate system. I'm going to hit open. There's that building on the site. And if I go to, let's say, True North, do you guys see that? Now check this out. I'm not moving the building. If I go to Manage and Location, and I go to Site, my internet's turned off. What do you notice in there? Mm -hmm. So let's take this, let's take the A2 position and make current and hit OK. Do you guys see that? That's the building on the site right there. Do you guys see how powerful? I didn't make, I didn't bring this in 50 times. I brought it in once, copied it all around the site, and basically recorded the address or the, the assessor's information or the deed information in there. I can do this all day. I'm not going to. Right? But I could do this all day. Do you guys see that? All right, now let's do one last thing on this. I'm going to save it and close out of it. I'm going to go back to building A1 and do something uh, horrible. I don't know. Uh, let me go, by the way, I don't know where my view cube is. This is kind of driving me crazy, but watch this. I'm going to take uh, building A. I'm just going to draw a section through here real quick. I'm going to make this kind of drastic. Uh, I'm going to move this like way up here. Okay? And look what happens when I move this up. Revit gives me a warning. Do you guys see that? It says, wait a minute. You established shared coordinates. Now you want to move the building around. What if you didn't cite it properly, right? No problem. As long as you coordinate this with your consultants and your team, just don't start moving things around because everybody's going to be affected. But it says, hey, you know, you move this building. What do you want to do? If you hit OK, by the way, it's a warning. It can be ignored. Should we always ignore warnings? No. no. Do we ignore warnings? Yeah, all the time. Right? We, we really do. But if I want to make that change, let's say this is going to be a floating building. I'll figure out the structural details later on. I just want to make it a floating building. I can publish the new location back to that file. Okay. I'll hit the save button. And by the way, that was for building A1. All right. Let's see if this works. All right. I'm not going to keep closing windows. I'll just close the whole file, right? All right. Let's open up A1. Go to a 3D view. Ignore my uh, ugly roof there. I'm going to go to uh, manage location A1. Make current. And I'm going to keep my fingers and toes crossed. Pretty cool, right? What do you think? Powerful stuff. I encourage you to play around with it because this is the only way you're going to really understand. You've got to play around, fight with it. I want to show you one last thing if you have a few minutes. This is a R2, 2016 R2, and um, Revit 2017 feature that has saved some of the hassle that we've run into. Uh, I'm going to open up a couple files here real quickly. This is my project base point, the project base point demo. I'll just give you a quick background on this. This should only take a couple minutes. Uh, here is my architectural file. And my project base point and survey point, I haven't set up shared coordinates. I'm not going to do it for this. This is not a shared coordinates exercise. Okay? But everything's located here. We had a talk with structural, however, oops, however, we got a little confused. They put, a, I'm not trying to blame structural folks, by the way. You know who's to blame for this, right? The architect, they didn't check everything. So just, I'm not really trying to point blame here. All right, so check this out. So the architect finds out when they go to insert, 
and they go to link a Revit and they bring in the structural origin to origin. So let's say on this project we don't care about shared coordinates, okay? And you're like, well, that doesn't work. How many of you have had this problem before? Everybody should raise their hands. Raise your hands. We've all had this problem before, right? Because this is where you realize, oh no, I gotta call ID8, or I gotta call my reseller and find out why this is happening. There's nothing to find out, you just didn't coordinate it. That's why I'm here today to talk to you guys about this, right? So the problem was, either you set up shared coordinates, that's not a problem by the way, it's a solution. You set up shared coordinates to deal with this, or you spend a couple of days grabbing your building and moving it. <laughs> We're all laughing because as I mentioned before, good luck with that. So the problem was that was your real solution was either you deal with it and manually move the building, which I don't like it, but it happens, or you establish shared coordinates. But if you're not gonna do shared coordinates and this thing isn't gonna be overly complicated, luckily, check this out. I'm gonna show you something. So if you came over to the structural file, and you're like, oh, I'll just grab this point and move it. Remember that? You're like, wait a minute. You're like, no way, let me try this again. Good luck, it's not gonna work. You actually just set up a user coordinate system, by the way, right? All right, so let me show you something here. In this example here, what you could do now is you could unclip the project base point, and then you can move it. I'm gonna zoom in closely, right? I'm gonna unclip it and move it over to here, where the architect told me. And then I'm gonna clip it again. That way, if I move that point, the building shifts. If you don't, you're just moving the point away from the internal origin. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the file, close it down. I'm gonna open up the uh, architectural file. Now, watch this. If I go to insert and link Revit and bring in the structural file, let me bring it in origin to origin, right? Because you're like, oh, I fixed it. Origin point's taken care of. Here's proof that the origin point and the project base point are technically not the same points. They start off in the same location. And that's when you're like, oh, I don't understand this. It's totally true. You're like, oh no, that's what I thought. That's why I'm here today, right? All right, I'm gonna undo that. Revis can say, yeah, you're undoing that. But finally, and I say finally, because I've wanted this for a while, if you don't have 2016 R2, I recommend you run out and get it. Because that helps right there, project base point to project base point. Forget origin point, survey point, forget all that, check this out. That's what we want, that's what we want. Well, the good news is if, if the structural update, if the structural took care of this and unclipped the project base point and moved it, it's taken care of in their file. So when you get an updated background, if you completely unload it and want to reload it, you can insert it by uh, project base point to project base point. And right, so, but here's the deal. Are you saying you're gonna open the structural file yourself and I don't like to do that? I, that's a big, for me, that's a big no-no. That, because I, any little change, even if I had to move something over in the structure file or change a node, I always ask them to do that and send me an upgrade. That way we don't have a coordination issue. Be, that comes down to liability, if you ask me. So I prefer to push the liability on the person that owns it, right? Um, so, yeah, I'm hesitant to say anything on that. It's just have them fix it and it won't be an issue. You'll have to put a note in your BIM execution plan or in your starting view that says link structural project base point to project base point. Okay. Ooh, lots of questions. Yes. A what? So the relocate project, it's the same as grabbing the project base point and moving it, clipped you're relocating the project. So, for example, one of it is like, well, maybe I need to move the project over a little bit more. Maybe we didn't cite it on the site where we should have. Maybe we found out we had too much cut and fill to do and we want to put on a flatter part. That's a great example of relocating the project. You're essentially moving the project away or closer to the shared coordinate point. 
So that's when you thank you. That's that's when you would do that. Uh, yes. No, because the problem is the building pad relies on the topography, so you can't have it as a separate entity uh, in the file itself. It has to be, that's why, but here's the thing, I love drawing levels, I don't know if I love this, I'm kind of lying to you, it's a lot of work. If I'm doing 100 units on a site, I'll have 100 levels for each building, and then I'll put the pad reference from that. So when you cut a section, you'll have a level and you align your building to that level. So the pads go in the master site plan, the Revit file like that building A and building B don't have the pad in there. But then you can link, right? You can do, I don't want to use the word circular, but you can basically link the master site in the building and then you can link the building into the master site by shared coordinates and then at least you have a site reference to work from. Yes? Absolutely. One of the things that I, I didn't show you, that remember that startup location I was telling you about? So let me actually use the structural file as the example because this is an easy one. Yes, you can reverse engineer it, and here's how easy it is, believe it or not. If I grab this point and move it away, I unclipped it, you see that? To reverse engineer it, you simply click on the unclipped version and go zero. You see I'm making it hard, I can just do it right here. Okay, that's how you get that point back to the original location. And then even easier, you're gonna love this. You will take a clipped, uh, you will take a clipped project base point and unclip it, right mouse click on it, move to startup location and watch where this is gonna go. There's your reverse engineering. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Startup really means a center. Don't you love the... So here's the deal. It's the center of Revit. That's what startup location is. So even if I drag this point over here, geez, that wasn't a good drag. Even if I drag that point there, if I unclip this and right click and go to move to startup location, it's because I took the origin point with it, the center point. But as soon as I unclip it and orphan it, the origin point is here, the startup location. So it's the center of Revit. So if I right click and go move to startup location, so it's the default center of, or, uh, of Revit. Okay, but when you move it clipped, when you move it clipped, it goes with it. One may argue you're not really moving the center, you're moving the, the, the shared point. I don't really know. I haven't done much research and yeah, it's just not a big deal to me. But yeah, that's, that's what it is. Come see me afterwards if you have any more questions. But thanks, you guys. I really appreciate everything. Awesome. Very nice. Thank you.